Hey guys, we already know there are two types of enhanced mode mode MOSFETs, which are N channel MOSFET and P channel MOSFET. This time we'll see high side MOSFET switching. We'll also get to know why P channel MOSFET switching is easy when it is used as a high side switch. What are the limitations to use an N channel MOSFET as high side switch and how we can counter them. So let's start. High side switching means the switching transistor is always on the top side. That is, it is connected to the supply and load is connected with respect to the ground. If we take an example of buck and water, the active switch which we use for switching purpose is always connected like this. This type of switching is called high side switching. Generally, high side MOSFET switching for P channel MOSFET is easy because it needs negative VGS. Let's see how. When we want to use a P channel MOSFET as a high side switch, then the source of the MOSFET is supposed to be connected to the supply side and the drain is connected to the load. We provide the turn on signal to the MOSFET through a MOSFET driver. The operation of this circuit is very similar to the direct driver for N channel MOSFET the only difference is the path of the gate driving current. The current never flows in the ground connection. Instead, the high charge and discharge current of the gate are conducted by the positive rail or we can say the supply voltage. Let's see how does this driving circuitry work. Assuming the input voltage and the driver's VDD are at the same voltage level. To turn on the P-channel MOSFET, we need to provide negative VGS which means the voltage difference between the voltage at the source and gate should be negative. Let me explain to you in a simpler way. We have selected a MOSFET RF9540. As per the datasheet, its gate to source voltage threshold is minus 2 to minus 4 volts. So in this circuit, the input voltage is let's say 12 volts. And if I provide 7 volts at the gate of the MOSFET, it will turn on because the voltage at the source is 12 volts and 7 volts is at the gate. If you see the voltage difference between gate and source, it would be around minus 5 volts, which is more than the gate threshold voltage. Hence, the MOSFET would turn on. Well, instead of providing 7 volts at the MOSFET gate, we can pull the gate to the ground. In that case, the VGS would be minus 12 volts. So the MOSFET will turn on and its current carrying capacity would be better. We have already seen about the relation between gate to source voltage and drain current in one of our previous videos. Please click on this card above to know more about it. So to turn on this MOSFET, the gate driver easily connects the gate to the ground to an internal transistor. To turn off this transistor, the gate of the MOSFET is connected to the supply voltage by the MOSFET driver. So the VGS would be zero. And MOSFET will turn off. See, that's how a P-channel MOSFET is beneficial for high side switching. We didn't require any additional circuit to turn on the MOSFET or turn it off. But we can't use P channel MOSFET in the circuit everywhere. There are two very important reasons. The P channel MOSFETs are costlier than their counterpart N channel MOSFETs. They also have high RDS on and input capacitance than N channel MOSFET. For example, if we take IRF9540 P channel MOSFET and IRF540 N channel MOSFET, the VDS of both MOSFETs is around same, that is 100 volts. But the RDS on of P channel MOSFET is around 200 milliohms, and RDS on of the RF540 is only 77 milliohms. So the N channel MOSFET will have less conduction losses during fast switching applications. So it's always advisable to use an N channel MOSFET for fast switching applications as it will dissipate less power. 
Well, it's not that easy. When we connect an N channel MOSFET as a high side switch, its drain is supposed to be connected to the supply voltage and the source would be connected to the load. Now, to turn on an N channel MOSFET, we need to provide positive VGS. Let's consider MOSFET RF540. It has 2 to 4 volts of the gate threshold voltage, which means the voltage difference between gate and source should be at least positive 2 volts. Let's consider the same circuit. The input voltage is 12 volts. When the MOSFET turns on, the voltage at the source would be also 12 volts. So to turn on this MOSFET, ideally we would require 14 volts gate voltage. But we'll provide 16 volts at the gate of the MOSFET with respect to ground to turn it on properly. That's how the VGS of this MOSFET will go beyond 2 volts and it will turn on. To do that, we'll need to have an additional supply of 16 volts just to turn on this MOSFET. Usually what happens is that the highest voltage in the system would be this. So just to switch this MOSFET, we'll need to connect a different power supply. Well, the only power supply is not sufficient. This gate voltage must be controllable from the logic, which is usually reference to the ground. Thus, the control signal have to be level shifted to the source of the high side MOSFET. And the power absorbed by the gate driver circuitry should not significantly affect the overall efficiency of the system. To mitigate all of these issues, we need to use special type of MOSFET drivers such as direct drive, level shifted drive or bootstrap gate drive techniques. We should take care of the efficiency of the circuit, bias and power requirements of the MOSFET, speed limitation, maximum duty cycle limit, DV by DT implications, startup conditions and transient operation before selecting any driving circuit. We'll see such high side end channel MOSFET driving techniques in the next video. Till then, stay tuned. I have added all the references related to these circuits in the description. If you have any query, you can ask me in the comment section or email me. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video.